Hello, everyone. A very warm welcome to the August edition of Identity in 15, powered by WSO2 Identity Survey. Today in this episode of Identity in 15, I will be taking you through how we can control the access to the applications with the OPA, Open Policy Agent, and how we can integrate OPA with the WSO2 Identity Server. And uh, I'm Vivek, um, a software engineer associated with the Identity and Access Management team of WSO2. And I'm happy to be and excited to be the host for the session today. OPA, Open Policy Agent, is a, a general purpose policy engine which is considered as a practical solution for the uh, ever, 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 everlasting changes in the uh, policies of, of, of cloud native environments. And uh, OPA is, uh, is used by the uh, giants like Netflix, Intuit, Medallia, Chef, and also is, is used in the uh, IAM domain also, and as well it's used in data monitoring, uh, risk management, and in various other domains. Open Policy Agent, OPA has uh, defined its uh, own policy language called Rego, which is very user friendly with its uh, friendly uh, user constructs. And, uh, uh, we can define the policies with those uh, rego and uh, we can we will be able to upload the policies and the necessary data to the opa engine and then at the time of policy enforcement we will try to query it with any kind of uh, valid uh, json value and uh, upon the uh, uploaded uh, policies opa will evaluate it and will send back a, a decision based on those policies and we will enforce those policies accordingly so as I said, Netflix and, uh, and many other giants are using this OPA, it is because it is easily deployable. So as, as you would see in the demonstration, uh, it is easily deployable with a zero deployment de dependency, and it can be run as uh, an operating system daemon. And, and also it, uh, for languages like Go, it is available as a library. And also uh, the administrators, uh, when there is a policy change, they don't need to change the services, but also, but they can simply change the policies and they can apply it and uh, they can uh, make it production ready as well. So this leads to uh, a very effective and efficient uh, policy management. And also it is compatible with the uh, various uh, languages because it works on, uh, it's a REST API and uh, works on HTTP and JSON. And it is, uh, uh, it is developed in, from the scratch in such a way that it, it could reduce the performance impact, so it is highly responsive. And since it is able to, uh, since the developers can deal with it, uh, with the uh, we can test it uh, the policies that we have defined. It is highly interactive as well. So uh, understanding the basis of the OPA and uh, what are the benefits of it, let's try to integrate OPA with the WSO to identity server. And the question is, where are we going to integrate OPA with? So uh, yes, first, uh, okay, since we are dealing with controlling the uh, access to the applications, yes, we will deal with the uh, role related uh, policy and we will define it with the Rego and uh, we'll upload that uh, Rego, uh, the policy to the OPA engine. And WSO the identity server has the capability uh, with the uh, adaptive scripts where we can define uh, uh, where we can define authentication policies and uh, implement them. And uh, though they are very capable for the authentication uh, scripts, uh, with the integrating uh, OPA, uh, uh, integrating OPA to that uh, adaptive scripts will make uh, WSO to identity server capable of uh, handling a fine grain access control as well. So we will try to. Um, integrate the OPA in the uh, adapt adaptive scripts. And what we actually do is we offload uh, the policy uh, policy engine, policy decision-making to the OPA, and uh, we'll continue to uh, enforce the policies from the identity server. Uh, server. So uh, in the adaptive scripts, we will, uh, uh, so after uploading the policies, we will uh, add the adaptive scripts, we will uh, query or we will invoke the uh, query to the OPA, OPA engine with the necessary attributes and then try to, uh, and OPA will uh, evaluate the policies and then return back with the policy decision, whether it's true or false, admit or not. And uh, based on those, we will implement the access control. 
So uh, in order to uh, in order to integrate, we we will go to uh, go through these steps. So first, we will download the latest version of Identity Server, and we'll need to configure that. So and uh, we had to create new users. So uh, I have already done these steps. I have created uh, three users and uh, a few roles like manager, admin, and customer, and uh, I have assigned the roles to the users as well. And we need a simple uh, service provider. So I have used a SAM, uh, SAML pickup dispatch. Uh, service provider and I have configured it and uh, I have also configured a SMS to be authenticator uh, since we need a second factor as well and uh, from the fourth step onwards I will be taking you through uh, to the steps from four, uh, fourth step that is uh, we will download of our server and we will configure it and up the server and then we'll write a policy based on the roles and then we'll upload it and we can test it from the shells also and then but we will try to uh, configure the SAML uh, service provider for role-based uh, adaptive script uh, integrating uh, OPA. And let's get on to the hands-on uh, hands uh, session right now. So uh, this is, so from here, you can uh, download the latest uh, identity server 5.11 version. I have already downloaded it. And uh, so as you can see, I have uh, created a, a new uh, user called Alice. And uh, yeah, it's myself, Vivek. And uh, so Alice has, uh, Sorry, let me log in as an admin. So this uh, Alice has the uh, uh, roles of a customer. And uh, so we uh, myself has, uh, I'm sorry, has the roles of uh, admin and the manager. And there is an, another admin um, as well, which is there by default. And also, uh, so I have configured a service provider that OPA integration, which is a basic uh, SAML application, uh, but I haven't configured the uh, authentication steps so far. So it, now it's as it's there as default. Uh, we'll try to, uh, we'll configure this with the adaptive authentication. And in the uh, identity provider, I have uh, configured a SMS OTP, which is uh, configured from, uh, from the basic uh, documentations that we have. So uh, I'll get into uh, uh, the server and let's download OPA and up, uh, up itself and run it. So you can see the server is up and running. So now I'll try to uh, uh, download the OPA server. So here we have a command, a curl command for uh, to download. So So I have created a folder and uh, so, yeah. So I'm downloading it to uh, show you that it is uh, that much easy without uh, any other dependencies uh, to download it. So it's easily deployable. So it's being currently uh, downloaded. And uh, so I'm following this, uh, uh, our official documentation of uh, using OPA policies for adaptive authentication and OPA integration blog uh, which we have uh, shared in the description so you can find them and play with uh, play around it so i hope uh, yeah so we have we have downloaded the opera server and let's configure this uh, yeah let's uh, okay uh, the server is up and running. Okay. So I have already defined uh, the policies. So uh, here you can see, uh, so how if, so by default, the permit is false. And if and only if there is any other admin or the manager policy that uh, we will allow the authentication, uh, sorry, we will uh, return a true for true or uh, we'll allow the, we allow it. And uh, here, so we have this, uh, uh, so we'll try to upload the policy. So this, uh, these uh, curl commands are there in the blog, so you can uh, refer that. So now, um, so yes, it is successfully uploaded as you can see from here. So now I'll try to uh, verify. So this is what I've said that like, it's easily, uh, uh, it is very interactive that we can, uh, without uh, wanting to 
uh, configure many things like we can uh, check and evaluate whether our policies are working as expected. So here you can see there is an admin. So ideally the permit, uh, the permit uh, or the, the, the permission should be there. So it's returning as true. So it is as we expected. Now let's try with another one, say admin two, which we don't have. Uh, so it should return false. Yes, as we expected is returning false. Now let's get into our, um, our application and see. Uh, okay, so, okay, let's try to log in as a admin first. Okay. Give me a Okay, let, let me try to uh, log in as Alice. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Okay, uh, I need to configure the uh, uh, adaptive script. So I actually missed that part. I thought I have already configured. So that's why in the earlier step, uh, he was able to log in in the first step itself. Okay, let me configure this by integration. And uh, in the local and outboard authentications, so we will be going for the advanced authentication. So in the step one, let's have the basic one. It's there, and let's add the another authentication step as step two. And let me add the SMS OTP federated authenticator, and let's add the scripts. So I have already had the script here with me. So I'll just I'll maybe I'll go through that in a moment. Okay. So what we have actually done is, uh, uh, so we here we, we try to get the uh, attribute uh, from as the claim roles. And then, uh, so this is the error page and the error message and the status that we have defined. And on the uh, success of the first step, so we try to integrate, uh, uh, we try to trigger OPA or invoke OPA. And uh, so we'll, we'll send this attribute. That means that has the role. Uh, the roles and uh, based on the uh, we'll get the result from the OPA and based on the result that's the permit so we'll execute step two if it is successful for so for uh, step two is a SMS OTP so for uh, 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 admin or a manager uh, person people with the manager or customer users with the manager or admin role they should have the second step else uh, they it, it will lead into error page let's try this Let me update it. Okay. Now let's get into the. Okay. Now, okay. I'm going to log in as uh, admin. So ideally, I should have a <clears throat> second triggering for a second factor. Okay. Now it's a request for my mobile number. So I'll provide my mobile number. Okay. So sorry. So the code has been sent. Okay, receive the code. I'm sorry, my bad. Okay, so I'm able to log in. So you have seen that uh, I th this uh, this particular user have a admin uh, role, and uh, so since uh, from the OPA policy, uh, from the policies that we have uh, uh, defined that uh, it should have. So the permit uh, permit comes as true. So we need to get into the second factor as well. So let me log out, and uh, let me log in again. So let me show you this, uh, the another user. Okay. So say this Alice, as I said, uh, he doesn't have a manager or a admin uh, 
admin role. So let me try to log in as Alice. So ideally you should throw an error page. As we have expected, it is throwing the error page because uh, he has no um, access, uh, he has no particular um, the roles as, as it expected by the policy. So let's try to, uh, let me try it. Uh, let me try to change the policy and see. Okay, I'll remove the uh, admin policy maybe. And uh, okay, let, shall I, okay, let's try this again as well. I'll try to log in as uh, myself and see whether I was able to log in because I have the managerial roles. Uh, okay, the code has been sent to by mobile. Okay, it was it. It's a moment to four zero. Okay, now I'm able to log in, right? Okay, so what I'm uh, currently trying is uh, I'm going to change the policies that I'm going to remove the uh, admin uh, from the policy. And uh, now from the OPA server, uh, I'll, I am going to uh, again uh, upload the policy, right? So the policy update is fine. So I'm again going to try. So here uh, for admin, it should return false, right? So it is returning false. So let, let's try that in the uh, UI as well. So, so now I'm logging as a admin, but it should throw an error page. Yeah. So yeah, we need to modify the message as well, but anyways, uh, so here it's throwing the error page because from the policy that manager is not expected or is not allowed to uh, uh, access this particular page. So uh, so this is the demonstration. So uh, I'm open for questions. So if you have any questions, uh, uh, let's let let's look at. Uh, we'll wait for a few few minutes, and in the meantime, you can post the questions to our Slack channel as well, or in our any other social media platforms. So we will take time and answer your questions, and also uh, uh, and also um, uh, uh, in the. Uh, towards the end of the month, like I think we will have another session on identity in 15. I think it's based on a signal. So let's wait for a few minutes to see whether we have any questions. Based on a signal. So Let's wait for a few minutes. Okay, uh, since we don't have questions, uh, let's wind up the session. Uh, thanks for joining, and uh, uh, until I'll let's hope uh, we can see, uh, we, I can meet you in another session of Identity in the 15. See you guys. Thanks a lot.